Hello, today we're going to be catheterizing the left coronary artery coming from the right radial artery. I've selected an 035 guide wire and we have a radial artery sheath in place. We're going to be slowly advancing the guide wire, which you will see assume its J-tip shape as it emerges from the sheath. I have a mental roadmap in my mind of where this uh, wire should be heading, and I'm looking to see whether I get any resistance as I advance the wire to, to warn me that I'm in any small branches. And you can see I'm getting a little bit of resistance there. So what I'm going to do is just bring in the guide catheter, but not take the catheter past the tip of the wire. And we'll take a small angiogram and see uh, exactly what's going on, and we can draw ourselves a road map. So if we take an angiogram here, and perhaps the wire which is going into a small branch doesn't seem to be any particular problem, but I now have a very detailed road map to show me where I need to go. And we can see the wire passing on fine there. As we come up to the elbow here, this is commonly where the wire can get into some small branches, but there we saw it negotiate the arm without any problems, and it's heading up now in the brachial artery. I'm just moving guide catheter and wire together now up through the subclavian artery. And as we advance the wire here, we're being careful to avoid going into the head and neck vessels. And the wire tip is now advancing down the anominate and heading to the left of the screen into the ascending aorta. And just there I could feel the resistance as the wire came up against the aortic valve. So I'm going to fix that wire there now. And with the wire position fixed, I'm advancing the catheter over the wire and down into the aortic root. So now we're going to take out the 035 wire. It's done its job of negotiating us uh, of navigating our way, sorry, to the um, ascending aorta. But what we don't want is for that wire to go down any coronary arteries. So we're going to bring back that wire, and what you'll see happen is that the guide catheter will assume its uh, preformed shape. In this case, we have a Judkins left 3.5 catheter. Now we need to know where we are in relation to the left main coronary ostium at this point. So we can take a small scouting shot and we connect up our uh, giving set, ensuring that we have no air inside the system. Before taking any shots, however, it's very important that you always look at the pressure tracing, and you should do that before you take any injection. And that's to ensure that there isn't any damping of the pressure trace, which might suggest that the catheter is either in the, up against the wall of, a, of the, either the aorta or the wall of the left main stem, or it's found its way into a small branch vessel, either of which might be dangerous if you were to inject at that time. So we're taking a gentle puff here, and we can see that we're very close to the ostium, but not quite selectively in, in it then. And what we're looking for is to see the catheter move into the artery, and you often will see it jump across like that. And again, we check our pressure tracing, gentle injection, and this catheter at the moment is not correctly orientated. It's pointing up a little bit into the roof of the aorta. So what I'm going to do is just gradually pull it back and torque it a little so that it's lying much more in a horizontal plane. Again, checking our pressure tracing is OK. A gentle injection. And we can see the outlines of the coronary vessels then. You can then go ahead and select your different views. If we come now into a uh, PA caudal view, about 30 degrees. And this is quite a good one for outlining the left main stem. I take a cine shot here. And we can see that we've got a very severe stenosis in the proximal LED there. And that's coronary angiography of the left coronary artery.